All right, back again, Luke here. And today what I want to do is kind of make a video here to help out some of you guys who may be having trouble here with uh, some of your arcade boards. And I uh, recently got an email from a guy who was having some trouble with his Street Fighter 2 board, said that uh, some of the characters on it were glitching out. And uh, I tried to write him back and uh, tell him about uh, EEPROMs and how to clean them up a little bit, but uh, he said he was pretty new at it. So I figured I'd make a video here for you guys to help out those of you guys who don't know much about these boards. Um, basically with your average arcade board you have a lot of parts on here and at first look it looks like a lot it looks you know just overwhelming but there are a lot of parts on here that you really don't have to worry too much about and there's some parts on here that you can easily remove and clean up by yourself so some of those here uh, being these these are EEPROMs and what the EEPROMs usually have on them they have the game uh, information they have the game sprites on them sometimes there's uh, mask ROMs which look very similar to this and uh, those will also carry some of the game information. Uh, other parts on here, uh, here's another, here's the bottom part of the board. Uh, you'll see a lot of these ICs. Now, in some of these cases here, there are some parts that can't be removed, and as you can see, a lot of these ICs here are soldered in. So, without a soldering pen, you can't really uh, remove these. But other ones, you can see there's a socket here, and these parts can actually be removed. Now the key point when removing these things and trying to clean them up is that you want to make sure that you remember where the notch is on these and uh, put them back in exactly the same way as you take them out. Now right here as you can see on this socket, right there, there's a small notch that's cut out. And uh, make sure that when you put the, uh, the uh, IC or the ROM back in, that you put it exactly the same way. If you put it in backwards, what you'll have is uh, you'll either have one IC fry or you might actually fry a, a series of them. So this is really important when you put them back. Even on these uh, EEPROMs here, you can see there's a small notch that's uh, poked out here. So what I'm going to show you here today is just how to remove uh, an EEPROM here or how to remove uh, an IC. Basically this works for mask ROMs, anything that's uh, socketed. Um, and how to remove it, how to clean it up here, and then how to replace it. Uh, normally there are some tweezers that you can get that will fit around both sides and you can just kind of like wiggle back and forth and pop it out. But uh, for some places, especially like some of these arcade boards, it's really hard to get at in between here because there's such a small space. So what I recommend using is uh, a flathead screwdriver. Try and use a really uh, thin flathead screwdriver. And the key part for this is that you don't want to get under the board here and you don't want to cut any of the traces on the board. There's actually a really, really small gap, as you can see here. And it's located under the IC so that you can pry up on it. What you want to do is slowly try and pry up on one side and then uh, go over to the other side and try and pry up on the other side as lightly as you can. And depending on the chip, it might be more difficult or easier to get out. Uh, it all depends on how long it's been sitting in there. And once you take it out, then you can see the legs on your chip on the EEPROM here. This is an old uh, Double Dragon 2 board, which many of you probably already know about. It's uh, pretty much shot, so it works good for this video. But as you'll notice here, you have many uh, legs on the bottom here. And what will happen from time to time uh, of regular use or uh, sitting in a garage or something, uh, these pins will get corroded. Now, uh, what I like to do is I like to use some uh, really fine grit sandpaper. You can find this at any hardware store. Uh, for example, this is P120, uh, very, very fine grit sandpaper. And I like to use this to run along the, uh, the sides of the legs to clean them up. So to give you an example here, I'll set down this camera, hopefully be able to uh, see this okay. Oh, maybe. And I'll take these uh, legs here, and let's move the circuit board a little bit. What you also want to do is make sure you do this uh, in a place where there's no carpet or static electric discharge because that can cause a lot of problems too for these chips. But what I like to do is sit here and um, take this along the, the ends here and try and polish them up here as nicely as you can. You don't want to go too hard on these because if you do this too hard what you might wind up doing is bending a pin. But once you get it uh, done you can go and do the other side as well. And try and polish this one up here. And just make sure you go along all the pins and get them, uh, you know, to, to sparkle or uh, 
heavy uh, uniform kind of look to it as you can see there uh, these ones are pretty shiny uh, right now so now the key part when putting these things back uh, this is another thing that to really you know be careful about when you put these things back like I had mentioned just a second ago you want to make sure that the uh, the notch that's cut out here it goes with the notch on the board now in some cases some of these sockets will be really difficult to tell where the notch is and some of these older boards might not even have a notch on it so uh, another thing that you could do is what I've done here um, just to demonstrate is you might even just want to put a dab of paint uh, to show exactly which one you took out and uh, which location. I use different colors here sometimes. That makes it easier to remember which one went in which socket. But if you're pretty confident that you know which number went where, uh, just make sure that you put a dab on here so you know which way it goes back in. And when you reseat these, you want to make sure that uh, you're not off like this. As you can see, this is off by two pins there, and it's uh, hanging over by two pins. And this is something that commonly happens, uh, you know, when you're putting them back in. You think that, oh, I got everything kind of put back together right, and uh, you put it back in, and you're off by a couple of pins, and you wind up getting problems. So make sure that uh, when you put it back in, that all the pins line up, and you want to apply a little bit of pressure here, and you should feel it click in and it should go in a little bit uh, uh, smoother than when you took it out uh, after you get all the pins cleaned up on it and uh, do that what I recommend is just one EEPROM, one mask ROM, one IC at a time uh, don't do this don't take all the chips out and then try and do it um, you know try and clean them up and put them back in because what you'll probably wind up doing is mixing stuff up and you'll get a lot more errors so just do it one at a time take your time with it clean each one up and then pop it back in and you should be all set here's one thing to uh, be careful of as you can see here sometimes when you put these back in if you're not careful you might have one leg that's popping out now in this case here this is just going to cause you a bunch of trouble as well so when you put these back in make sure that you have all of the pins lined up in the right spots and you don't have any of these pins hanging over the sides that goes especially for um, the ICs too here uh, in their sockets so once you get these things all popped out cleaned up and put back in you might be able to get rid of uh, different problems for example missing uh, graphics uh, glitchiness uh, sometimes game locking up uh, it's a really simple fix and uh, it might get you on your way back to gaming again one other thing that you can do as well is uh, sometimes if you look at this JAMA edge here uh, there might be sometimes corrosion that happens along the edge here and uh, once again you know if you use a little bit of sandpaper you can kind of clean these up a little bit what you want to make sure you don't do is don't go too high because you might wind up cutting these traces here and if you cut these traces or you break through any of these traces here you'll probably wind up with uh, you know more problems so make sure you you take your time with the stuff make sure you're really careful with these uh, these traces on the board make sure you're careful when you replace these um, chips and uh, when you clean them up and put them back in there you might be on your way to gaming again really quickly but that's just a small little tutorial here, and uh, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.